at one point, like I felt like I was up in the corner on the ceiling looking down on myself. I felt like I was losing control, like I was separated from my own body. <laughs> Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jen and the channel is Faith Made Legacy. Today I want to talk about a 10 month period in my life when I was 27, 28 years old where I had an addiction to a benzodiazepine called Xanax, otherwise known as Alprazum. Um, benzodiazepine is a certain class of drug. I have other stories that relate to this class of drug but today I am going to focus on Xanax and I'm going to focus specifically on the exact 10 months. The first time that I tried Xanax, I was actually at the airport in Las Vegas. Um, I had always been kind of not a good flyer, afraid to fly. And I was taking a trip from Vegas back to my hometown of Chicago at the time. Um, I had been given a couple little 0.25 milligram Xanaxes and I took one I uh, didn't feel it right away was getting ready to board a plane and decided to take one more so that would have been 0.5 milligrams I remember getting on the plane and honestly at this point really remember nothing from that point on what I know about this time is that I literally was on this four to five hour plane ride home to Chicago and I found out from the person that was picking me up um, that I went through the airport, went to baggage claim. This is when I was back home in Chicago. Um, so this is at this is at actually Midway Airport in Chicago. So I went through the entire process of claiming my own baggage, walking through the airport myself and meeting my ride outside who confirmed later that I had gotten into his car. Um, I had called him from my cell phone to let him know that I had arrived, came with my bags, I wasn't missing anything or anything of the sort. And that was my first experience with Xanax. I continued to use Xanax at the same small amount, anywhere from about the 0.25 milligrams to, I wanna say two milligrams a day which is the size of a bar. And later, I was introduced to bars of Xanax. Um, at this time in my life, I was traveling back and forth from Chicago to Las Vegas. Um, and in Vegas, I was introduced to the bars. At the time, now again, this is when I was 27, 28, so this is years ago, and there's a lot of different things going on with Xanax bars, especially picking them up on the street. So I'm going to get into that slightly touch on it. But I was introduced to the yellow bars, which at the time were supposed to be amazing. And somehow I had noticed that they were like more um, enticing than the, the white bars. They seemed to be a little bit stronger. And I really started to love the feeling. Um, as you guys know from this channel, I have experienced anxiety my whole life. Um, I had already been prescribed Klonopin, which is another benzodiazepine, and is also another video. I will get into my experience with benzos and more talk about benzos at another time. But I just want to focus on this 10-month period with the Xanax. And at this point, um, I wasn't taking Klonopin by prescription, so basically I was self-medicating on my own um, off the street without a prescription. So I was introduced to the bars and I started taking the yellow bars. Um, as a lot of you know, I always had a lot of cash. I always had my own money to support all of my addictions um, as I've been addicted to a lot of different drugs for many years. I just kept purchasing bars of Xanax at this point. Um, so in the beginning, I stayed at a steady maybe one, two bars a day, which is still actually very much. Um, and didn't realize the addiction that I was actually getting into. I want to say around the six month, things changed drastically. And my tolerance, my dependence, everything else like that just shot up. At this point, I started going up to, I would say, gosh, 
two to three Xanax bars three to four times a day. Um, a lot of people are probably going to say, how is that even possible? But by the grace of God, I lived through this. Um, and it became to a point where I had to take them every day. It is very dangerous to stop using benzo or to lower your dosage without medical monitoring or in a hospital or um, a taper that a doctor is monitoring and has given to you you can it's actually life-threatening so I want to say that right here you know um, and obviously I'm not a doctor or anything of the sort um, and so luckily I didn't do that because I really actually I knew that to an extent but I didn't know how serious it was it is um, along with alcoholism the light the most life-threatening withdrawal um, and you know as a lot of you know comes along with seizures um, and a lot of other things but unless you've actually experienced withdrawal from benzodiazepines you have no idea the spiritual hell the actual medical torture what you go through with that which I'll get into in a second anyways I am now taking this insane amount of Xanax and I actually am getting so sick and I know I'm getting so sick but I'm scared and I don't want to face it and I have a really good friend of mine from Ohio um, who used to dance with me um, we used to stay together in Vegas when she would come to Chicago to work she would stay with me and she came to stay with me she was a really really good friend um, she came to stay with me she knew that I was having problems um, and I was still working at the time because I needed money I needed to support myself I needed to pay my rent and I needed to buy my Xanax so we would go to work and I had gotten to such a sick science with this where I would like take a couple bars to take a nap like I would know what would put me down for a couple of hours before work um, I would get up we would go to work we would stop I would get two Starbucks drinks to try to even it out every once in a while I would use some coke to balance it out whatever the situation was um, as you guys know I also went through a very serious coke addiction I talked about that in my last video and so yeah you know um, the mix is really really dangerous but I was doing it quite often um, but at this point Xanax was my thing um, I actually even remember like waking up on my bed with plates of coke next to me like that I had passed out because I'm not the type of person I wasn't the type of person that would just stop doing coke I would make sure I would do it all all that I had and I would wake up literally with plates of coke next to me on my bed because I had passed out from Xanax from taking so much and just like you know gone to sleep um again the grace of God it's amazing it's really amazing um a lot of people have not lived through situations like this uh basically I'm overdosing and I wake up and snort some coke but anyways so a couple things that I want to highlight during this like um, obviously with the situation I mentioned at the beginning with the airport Xanax is known for you know causing amnesia I had many many times where I was blacked out um, almost all the time really it got to the point where it was almost all the time and so you know I remember a few things that were really scary um, one thing I remember really really distinctly as I don't remember everything else that well is that I opened a closet in my apartment in Chicago and there was a broken mirror with like a sharp shard sticking out like this and I was barefoot and I kicked it and like literally sliced off the entire top of my toe sorry trigger warning I forgot to say at the beginning if this is a little graphic and disgusting um, if that bothers you guys you might want to like fast forward through this part but anyways um and i just it didn't even hurt and i just didn't even care and i kept walking now i'm not one who gets like queasy with blood or like nauseous or anything like that but i had hardwood floors i turned around me in the hallway and looked behind me and literally there was a trail of blood so long and so much blood that i actually got nauseous and like kind of just like tried to get to the couch as soon as i could uh that was really out of character for me I walked around for three weeks 
with my toe like that. Um, everyone was telling me I had to get it stitched back on, which was probably true. But once again, one way or another, I like wrapped it up on my own. I last thing I wanted to do was go to the emergency room. Um, I don't like the emergency room anyways. I don't like. I don't think anyone does. But I was super paranoid of them like checking my levels and like what they were gonna do with me. You know, I knew I was in a bad way and I was in denial. Um, and so I walked around with my toe like this. I sure did and I, it went back together. So one way or another, my toe was okay. Um, another hurdle that I jumped over. Lots of other things happened in between this time, um, you know, as you can imagine. And again, like I said, I, a lot of, I'm blacked out through a lot of it, but I really just want to like talk about this 10 month period. So in this, it, it, we're in, it was the sixth month where my dosage raised after staying steady for like the first six. Um, this whole thing lasted 10 months. So somewhere around like the seventh or eighth month, I remember calling my brother and telling him he lived in Arizona. I remember calling him from Chicago. I remember the phone call really well, telling him that I needed help, that I was too sick to do it myself, and I needed to do it in a hospital. Um, I didn't even know what I meant. Um, even filming this video and thinking about it and you know, outlining it a little bit, I realized how much denial I actually have. Like, you know, people will be like, oh, have you been to, rehab and you know this and that with all your past with addiction and it's like I realized when I was writing this video that I have been to detox for benzos five times and the last time with not such a great outcome again I will do another video devoted I'll probably be doing a lot of videos about benzos because it's a big part of my life but I just wanted to focus again on the 10 months with Xanax and so that really hit me um and so my brother said he would take care of it for me. He was able to get me a place, a bed in a detox in a hospital. Um, they didn't have a bed for a month. I d had to go get medical insurance, okay? I remember this very well. Um, I never had it. I always paid for everything out of pocket. All the things the doctors were prescribing me, all the things that I'll get into at some point, um, you know, pharmaceutical medications that were also problems for me, addiction-wise and things like that. But I remember um, having someone refer me to a certain insurance situation and this man coming out to my house and me signing up and because I had that money and that cash all the time from stripping, I was able to do this and set a flight and in the meantime, I had to continue to take care of my Xanax addiction with how sick I was, um, how much danger I was in. I had to literally keep going. So that's what I did. I kept using, um, kept buying, and you know, as much as I did know how much trouble I was in and how bad of a situation this was, I did not know as much as I know now. Um, I was scared, but I was also popping Xanax all the time, so I was half not even with it. And, you know, half my anxiety was really non-existent, to be honest. Um, so anyways, I got on a plane, got to Arizona where my brother was. He picked me up. He took me to the hospital. I remember sitting in intake. I remember my blood pressure was incredibly outrageous, which is another thing associated with benzodiazepines. I just want to put into this video um so but i remember the nurses looking at each other and being like that can't be right can it and that started to scare me a little bit um and i remember you know finally getting past the intake and being in the detox which was going to be a five-day detox um didn't know any better at the time and all of my five benzo detoxes have been five days which I now know is a big reason why I suffered very hard from it. Um, I know that Benzo Detox, I have done a lot of research on this and watched a lot of people talk about it and talked to a lot of people about it. Um, you know, and I've been in a lot of Benzo support groups and things like that. 
and a long taper is actually what the ideal situation is and I've learned that the hard way um, but I've actually never had a long taper before so anyways um, I remember my blood pressure being extremely crazy and these nurses just looking at each other like I said saying that's this can't be possible so I started getting a little nervous um, I passed the intake um, situation at this point I was in the actual medical detox I was sitting down with a nurse who was doing an assessment of me and I thought that she just knew that I was in there to detox off of Xanax but from what I remember again I was blacked out I don't remember her I remember the paper and the pen I can't remember her face or anything we were talking about but I remember her telling me wait you're here for Xanax and I was like yeah you know and she's like wow she's like you're so hyper and your eyes are so dilated your pupils are so dilated i would have thought meth or something else and i just laughed but when i look back at that now that is so weird to me so strange um anyway so i went through this five days it was hell um but nothing compared to the hell that i would soon face afterwards i was released into my brother's care and wound up staying at his apartment on the couch um and as soon as i got there that's when the hell really started i could not move off of his couch um this was an apartment he had a roommate and a girlfriend um you know being my first time detoxing off of benzos if you've ever detoxed off of benzos before then you know um i wasn't really prepared for what was going to happen so that's like you know a blessing in disguise kind of because I wasn't expecting it the panic attacks and anxiety were literally like spiritual hell um, it was it was torture um, I experienced derealization and depersonalization um, at one point like I Felt like I was up in the corner on the ceiling looking down on myself I felt like I was losing control like I was separated from my own body which I found out later I guess is a regular symptom um, luckily during this detox I didn't experience suicidal um, ideation or suicidal thoughts or whatever um, which was great because I was at my younger brother's apartment you know what I mean but that's a very common thing to happen um, and especially when you're not sleeping insomnia is a huge thing um, huge huge thing coming off of it uh, they don't send you home with a lot of medicines because you're coming off of this substance and so the point is to be detoxing off of that um, and I just was unable to move from the couch. I was in so much pain. Um, I was throwing up constantly. I remember eating a cheeseburger and just being so wanting to eat it and throwing up it or throwing it up. Um, and I was there for about like five months, I think. And it was amazing of my little brother at the time. Um, they didn't have money, you know what I mean? And I was still in my stripping years and whatever. Um, and after five months, I just got up one night and went to work in Tempe, Arizona, because he was living in Arizona, where I detoxed. And I came home with $500 and it was helpful for everyone. Um, and I continued to work until I was able to go back home, I think um, another couple months. So I think I stayed for about seven months. Um, and the longer you are using benzodiazepines and the higher of a dosage you're using, the harder the withdrawal is gonna be. So at this point, I'm only 10 months on Xanax and really only out of control um, with the dosage in the last like four. So, you know, at that time it was a little bit easier for me to not run into some serious situations that I know are going on right now with fentanyl being pressed into pills. Um, Xanax is a big one. I know obviously the blues um, that people talk about, which are the perk 30s, are really fentanyl pills and people are overdosing left and right. But yes, they're doing it to all pills that you are buying on the street. Fentanyl is in Xanax. 
more than 50% of the time um, and people are overdosing. That wasn't going on at that time, so I was really lucky not to run into that, even though I was so out of control, and I really don't know how I lived through that. I easily could have overdosed. I am going to definitely come back with some more benzodiazepine stories and um, videos and just, you know, I'm always open to talking about them in my Sunday morning live streams um, at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I talk about all things prayer, recovery, addiction, mental health, everything like that, whether you're going through something or really open discussion as long as it's respectful and everything like that. But um, for now, I just wanted to touch on that absolutely insane, crazy 10 months where I was out of control, addicted to Xanax. And I hope you guys will enjoy this content. If you do enjoy this content, please subscribe and hit the little bell next to it. Definitely comment down below. Let me know if you've experienced anything like this, if you're familiar with Xanax, um, if you've gone through any type of benzo withdrawal, if you're suffering at this time. Um, and don't forget to give this a like for me. It really helps. I appreciate that a lot. Again, my name is Jen, and the channel is Faith Made Legacy, and I will see you in my next one. Oh,